This is Twit. Uh, the EU will require USB-C charging for mobile devices by the end of next year. We yeah. did it, everybody. We did it. Yay! We did it. We did it. We did it. Uh. <laughs> so what is Apple going to do? Are they going to... Uh, so, uh, by the way, if it won't affect the iPhone 15 because anything sold before the end of 2024 is not impacted. Mm -hmm. So it really right. means that 20, yeah. the iPhone 16 probably, right? Can, can I can I can I just say that if Apple has not ditched the lightning port by then, they're <laughs> just they're they're yeah. just trying to be jerks. So I've, so I've so I've got my I've got my loner like 14 Pro, and the only thing that I hate about it, I, I like so much about it is this damn lightning port because yeah. mm -hmm. if, as, as I'm spending the first few days setting up, so, oh that's easy. I'll just get I'll just get this thumb drive. Oh no, I don't have a thumb drive. Well, what if I just uh, hook it up to? Oh no, I can't hook it up to this. Well, gee, oh the power is low. I'll just I'll just hook it up to these. Oh no, I can't hook it up to that either. I'm going to have to basically have a, a lightning station to deal with the, these the <laughs> the alternative reality that Apple has, in which basically people still think that lightning is a thing. They they were the first to they were the first to get rid of the, the headphone jack because oh nobody uses the headphone jack, but oh yeah we'll keep the lightning. Oh everybody loves everybody loves the we're 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 getting I mean, oh, like Jason what what is it they would always say they they would say in the circumstances we our customers love our, the lightning port our customers love the, the lightning port. And what they'll say next year is, but you know what? We decided to do something better. Uh, USB-C. <laughs> Although I, I got to be, we got to be fair here. They got so much crap from everybody when they went away from the dock connector to the lightning connector. And I, I'm sure there are people <laughs> with Apple that are like, oh man, this is going to happen again. But yeah, the time has passed. I actually, the rumors, I think, Leo, are that next year, at least one and maybe all the iPhones will finally go USB-C. Apple's known this is coming for a while. And, and besides yeah. which, t uh, Andy's totally right. The only way you'd keep the lightning port at this point is spite. Like that's literally, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it's moved on. The lightning port was a good idea. It allowed Apple to get out there with it before USB-C was finalized. Good for them. But USB-C is everywhere, even on the Apple uh, product line. It's everywhere but the iPhone now. And and some charging on a peripherals, right? And all that stuff's going to flip over in the next couple of years, for sure. And this is the quote gonna... from the uh, EU, the uh, European Parliament voted to make this the standard. Regardless of their manufacturer, uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> they actually they actually <laughs> mention that. Regardless of the manufacturer, uh, all new mobile phone, anything with 100 watts or down so if it's more than 100 watts power delivery like a laptop you got till 2026 yeah. but all new mobile phones tablets digital cameras headphones and headsets handheld video game consoles and portable speakers e-readers keyboards mice mice portable navigation systems earbuds and laptops that are rechargeable via wired cable operating with a power delivery up to 100 watts will have to be equipped with a usb type c port by the way, yeah. you can't throw a charger or an adapter in the box. It's got to have that port. Laptops. So all of Apple's peripherals are going to have to be redesigned because the Magic yeah, the Pad and the yeah. Magic Mouse and yeah. the Magic Keyboard all charge with lightning. So they're going to have yeah. to change all of those too. And AirPods even the Pro. brand new AirPods Pro case is yeah, lightning. Yeah, it's yeah. Pro. It's a lightning port on there. Well, that's a good. I mean, uh, do you think consumers will be miffed? Andy, did you say Jehoshaphat or Chi Hosafat, which is a wireless complaint? Yeah. standard? QI Hosafat. I do wonder. I do wonder what their what their strategy is going to be. I mean, I, I think USB C is just so obvious that they'll do it, and it's not going to be that big a deal. And people will complain, and there'll be adapters, and it'll you know it'll be fine because the world is ready. In many ways, the difference between this and the um and the dock connector to Lightning transition is that the world was not ready for lightning because there there was no nobody was paving the way uh, the world is ready for usb-c on yeah, all yeah, devices now clearly. it really is yeah well the world is here yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. it's easy to yeah it's, it's easy to make to, to legislate the past <laughs> because they're going to they're going to usb-c anyway so it's it's i don't think i don't think that they changed the trajectory very apple much. did claim in 2020 you may remember 2020 uh, that the charger requirement would stifle innovation. <laughs> <laughs> Three years ago. Uh, yeah. Yeah, again, this is this is the, this is the fun thing about about <laughs> Apple statements. It's always like we we are we are we are uh, this is courage. We're we're here to innovate and and we're we're here to give you the, with the future. We're we're going to skate to where the puck is going to be, unless it's like for whatever bizarre reason. Again, it's like yeah, we're going to have a mobile. We're going to well, uh, put on it, the AirPods Pro. Why? Why would you even do that? It's just such a silly thing. It's like well, the, uh, the question is: is it, is it is it does it do they have to put it in even if it was wireless?
wireless charged? Like if, even if it doesn't need. Oh, does it have to have a port? Yeah, I don't. Because I, I, I don't believe so. When I, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean to. I have a, I have a feeling that the the direction for some of the products will just be to get rid of the port altogether. Yeah, especially because like you can't Apple, make it. You can't put an. You can't put a USB C into a, a watch. No, oh no no no! That, that really that's, so what I'm saying is is that the, so I can see the AirPods and a lot of the other things and even the lower end iPhones just not having a port at all. You know, like and, and mean, then the the Pro ones need it because they need the they need the speed. Yeah, Pre- it would require them to like, have a wireless charger in the box, though, which is uh, with the USB C. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that would be fine. I don't think Apple's don't thing is like I think Apple could do it and then just give you a USB C to a wireless to whatever, and then and and, and what would they would do is probably just do it in Europe. <laughs> like okay, here uh, no, they, they, they wouldn't. They wouldn't have a separate skew for that. Uh, not, I don't think. And it's, and and it's, it's always an interesting conversation about would Apple? Apple is the company that would say that there are so many compelling reasons, both from us as a manufacturer who wants things to be simple and cheap to make, and for the consumer to simply say, you know what, we're going to commit to MagSafe. We're going to have we're going to have a connector with Pogo pins on it, like contact pins for things that could that absolutely require a many a mechanical connection. But we don't see the reason for going with USB-C when we can build something custom that is so much more adequate, so much more uh, uh, more agile for our needs. I don't think it would be a good idea, but I would be interested in at least hearing the argument that Apple would make for it, because if any one company is going to do it well, it would be Apple. What is what What about, though, the argument Apple, the three-year-old Apple argument, two-year-old Apple argument that uh, stifles innovation? What if there's something better than USB-C? Does, it looks right. like Parliament would have to approve it. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. I, I would be much more troubled about this if I didn't feel like the era of uh, relying on wired connections was rapidly ending and that USB-C as a connector is robust enough to last a long time. But there is yeah. this question of like, what if they had legislated that everybody use USB-A, right? I mean, uh, and then you'd say, well, they would maybe work with the USB consortium to come up with a new standard and all that. And it is that part. I, I don't disagree with the fact that it means that nobody can come out there and invent a better plug because it won't be able to be sold in Europe. At the same time, I think the realistic impact of this is pretty small because I, I have I have a hard time imagining that somebody's going to invent a truly better mousetrap at this point uh, that is a wired connection to a smartphone, right? It just doesn't... I feel like USB-C is good for a, a long time, and by the time that you, it's not, we probably won't be using cables anymore. Yeah, I think that, I think that the, the impact is probably for this one is minimal. The precedent is a little scary because, you know, the people who write these laws are, you know, they're digital children led by children. <laughs> like there's nobody actually operative with operational knowledge making these decisions. And so they, you know, so that it's just good. This one, this one. Don't they, you think they, they have they, staff they or somebody yeah, who knows what they're talking about? Yeah, their about staff too. are a bunch of kids. <laughs> like, you know, like, like we see, that's what it is in the United States. Their staff are kids that have never actually worked in the industry. They're all coming out of Harvard and they've got good, good degrees and they don't know, they haven't actually worked in the industry most of the time. And so they're making a bunch of theoretical decisions um, with, and they're telling people to make decisions who don't know anything about it. And so the thing is, is that it's, it, as a, as the government ma- tinkering with this, there's just a high probability of them doing a lot of damage. In this case, they're not going to. And yeah. partially, they're not doing much damage because they were stalled for so long. So they st- <laughs> they were stalled out for so long to the point where it just doesn't matter anymore. But at some point, they'll start making decisions that do. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want uh, any governmental agency to say, you know, to mandate eSIMs, for instance. There's a, st- right. I think there's a strong right. societal case to, you know, try to eliminate the waste of multiple chargers. And it mm-hmm. certainly benefits consumers. I mean, are you yeah, happy that the days well, of like Brazil, every a good, laptop having a good example having- is Brazil. Brazil is fining Apple for not putting the charger in. Those chargers are trash. Like, like the chargers that, that Apple sends out are underpowered, oversized. Like you should, right. you know, and, and all of us have a bunch of them. I got a, I got a box full of these, these things mm-hmm. that have come from every device that came out. And, you know, I don't use any of them anymore. I don't even use the ones that come with the laptops, you know? And so the, mm-hmm. so the, um, yeah, there actually is uh, a brisk par- market, isn't there for GAN and uh, I just higher get GAN. powered I mean, USB-C chargers? Because then it, it does, it's one, it's one brick that I can take yeah. on the road and yeah. I can just power all the different things. And do you think normal people do that or just s- sophisticated people? I, th- I imagine Anchor is doing quite saying, well. A lot of normal these, people uh, have high Yeah, but a lot of normal chargers. people have have the, I mean, they already have ones laying around at this point. Yeah. You know, so like yeah. it's. Yeah. Well, and it is annoying. I mean, I have to say it is annoying and you've made this case before where you get the wrong kind of cable or the wrong kind of charger. 
you know, and you, you have that little, what was it, the five watt Apple phone yeah. charger, and you plug it the in and it doesn't work. I don't understand why. Yeah, so annoying. That's annoying. Um, so on the, on, I know you haven't. They haven't legislated a fix for that. Yeah, and, and on, and on the positives. On, on, on the positive side of things, I, I do. I, uh, on the positive side of things, it's nice to to know that someone gets a charger that is certified, that is proper, as opposed to I, I went to the I went to the bodega across the, across the street, got something that looks like an Apple charger, but it actually sets stuff on fire because uh, because it was things were overheating or stuff like that. Um, and, and and I do agree with a lot of the points that Alex is making. Be the, uh, the counterpoint that I would make is that. Uh, I don't think that they're as I, I I never think that they are as ill people are as ill advised as Alex has, has has experienced. Number two, if there is if the counterpoint to uh, well, well they don't have people who work in the industry who are advising on this. Well, that's good because this isn't here to help the industry. This is here to help consumers, and we've all seen how watered down a consumer or safety oriented uh, legislation can be. Once oh don't worry, we'll have the oil industry advise on how much uh, what, how much should be budgeted for cleanup and what what constitutes a leak. So it's it's a good it's, sometimes it's a good thing to push things forward to have an adversarial relationship between the government and industry. If the result is something that's positive for consumers, it isn't. It isn't always, but if, uh, this this is why I don't necessarily think it's the the fact that you don't have someone who's had ten years of experience in manufacturing or someone who just came from uh, who's, who's basically spending a, a two or three year stint in government basically to make the contacts to make themselves more employable after this administration ends when they go right back into industry and they can say, oh well, don't worry, we can, we can quash this. I know, I know, I know that so and so like actually doesn't read much when they're on Thursday because that's their golf date if we just introduce this on thursday we'll have a much better chance of this going through hey we should talk linux it's the operating system that runs the internet a bunch of game consoles cell phones and maybe even the machine on your desk but you already knew all that what you may not know is that twit now is a show dedicated to it the untitled linux show whether you're a linux pro a burgeoning sysadmin or just curious what the big deal is you should join us on the club twit discord every saturday afternoon for news, analysis, and tips to sharpen your Linux skills. And then make sure you subscribe to the Club Twit exclusive Untitled Linux Show. Wait, you're not a Club Twit member yet? Well, go to twit.tv slash club twit and sign up. Hope to see you there.